So I've been reading about this advanced timing a lot and different racing coils. I have the uh, rocket racing coil in the pill bottle I bought years back. It's never failed me. It never really noticed any big difference. Maybe it works a lot better at high RPM. Maybe it smooths it out a little, but I never noticed anything wrong with the old one. I just thought it'd be an upgrade, and that was a cheap way to go at the time. It still is the cheapest uh, racing CDI for these bikes that I can find. So, I never played with the actual timing on the magneto and magnet there, so I'm going to go out and see if I can do some tinkering with that. Advance the timing down on the magnet a little bit and see what kind of results I get. So this is the bike that I'm going to be tinkering with. It's got this uh, Rocket Racing CDI in the pill bottle. Uh, I've never really had any issues with it. I've had it for years. Didn't seem to do anything too noticeable to it. Little things I did over the years. I made a nice pipe. It's all honed out real nice and big in there. The ports are all big, going into the exhaust. Nah, the intake's the same way. It's all really big size. I mean, not at the cylinder. It's ported a little bit. I lowered the the intake port. I raised the exhaust. I think I raised the the uh, transfer ports a little bit. Beefed up the carb, honed it out a little bit, jetted it. This stuff's all on there just for the winter. Because I rip it through the snow and the rain. Little dinky gas tank there. And my spark plug. A lot of people are going to be wondering, why is he running that shitty little spark plug? Well, zoom in here. Sorry, I'm trying. That's the burn on it. I mean... It's burning nice. I've jetted it with these plugs, and I've tried other plugs. The NGK, the 6s, 7s, different heat ranges. And, uh... I've had this plug for years and years, and it's never failed me. And, uh, I just like it. It works good. Never had a problem with it, so... Anyway, back to topic. I get at the magnet in here and uh we'll see where it's at. Maybe I'll get the the uh degree wheel on there and see if I can figure out exactly where it is in degrees from top dead center. But maybe not, we'll see here. Okay, so that's the magnet. I got it sitting. You can see the piston there. I got it best at top dead center I could. I broke my indicator dial. I just dropped it and it didn't take too well to that, so. It's sitting best I can at top dead center. And you can see the keyways offset a little bit. And this is offset a little bit more. So it brings it back. I don't know, you kind of see where it comes back to. That top dead center. Now really, I don't know where this fires, so I'm not even going to try to map it out with a with a uh, degree wheel. I'm just gonna, my plan is, I'm gonna take a little bit of this edge off the left side here so that when I put it in, it can advance a little bit on the keyway. And then, now there's a couple different ways I could fill this one side in with a shim, or I could use a fatter keyway. and shave the bottom part down that goes into the shaft but keep the top part thick to fill that extra bit that I grind out 
and we'll go see what happens here. I'm gonna use these little files. Dinky little files. And basically, I wanna take off this edge right uh, Sorry, this edge right here, right through. I'm gonna take that off a little bit. Okay, so have this keyway here. You can see the one side shaved down. Now it's only half a millimeter because that's the keyway I had. The original keyways uh, two and a half mil. And this keyway I have is 3 mil, so I shave that half a mil off the one side. Then, I enlarge the magnet on this upper left side here, so that it can turn more and advance a little bit more. And then this thicker part, this thicker keyway, fills that magnet hole that I cut in the smaller bottom because it's shaved that smaller bottom there can still fit into the shaft just fine so keyway goes in the shaft There. You try to get it in the shaft and the groove should be on the right side otherwise you can retard your timing and flip it keyway in there just flatten it out a little bit of a tilt downward to the front Line up this. You can see the cutout. You can see where I ground it. You can also see all these metal shavings. It should be blown off with the air gun. I'll do that. I'm just going to keep going to show you here. So yeah. Slip that on. Lines right up. Is your keyway still in there? I'm just taking her out. We'll do a test on that timing advance. Just gotta grab my girlfriend a video. <laughs> I don't got no GoPro, but guys. Alright, we'll see how she starts up. Oh, my handlebars are coming off after that leap.
I did that little bit of adjustment on the on the flywheel magnet, whatever you want to call it. And really, I only moved it maybe a millimeter in advance at most. It was only a half mil measurement, but it was a little bit sloppy, and I turned it as much as I could within that sloppiness. So it's probably a little more than a half a mil advance. <coughs> Which probably isn't much, maybe it's not even enough to make a difference, but it seems like I'm going in the right direction. It's working. I took it out for a test, it seemed to work better, but again, it's really cold out, and the cold makes them snappier anyway, just because of the air. So, I'm going in the right direction. I'll post this video as is, and in the future, when I go a little further with the magnet, maybe it warms up and gives me a little better baseline. I'll post it and see what, what comes of it. So this is what I ended up doing. I'm using that keyway there that I shaved down the bottom of so it'll fit in the shaft thicker keyway and this piece of metal as a shim in here if you catch what I'm saying there and that'll give me the advance that I want to try out here blow this off and give it a try so I advance the timing a bit more, like a fair bit now, and I'm going to take her out, try it out for a rip. Unfortunately, I can't record it this time because it's dark out, and my girlfriend doesn't want to come out and record me, so it's all me. I'll come back and let you know how she went. So, in conclusion. Conclusion after all that Didn't learn much because it didn't really make too big of a difference with the first little advancement I seemed in I seems like I noticed a difference it Feels a little more powerful a little more top end then I went that little bit more. I think it was By the thickness of the shim I used it was 0.85 mil and then it seemed to decline after that. So I took the shim out, put it back on the other side, so basically to where that little advancement in the beginning. And it seemed to be running at peak again. So I don't know if those little tiny increments are not enough to notice a big difference. But it did seem like on the furthest end of my advance, it started going downhill. So let me know what you think. If, if that's enough advancement, I need to do more. Or if you think I'm within the range there. and Didn't learn a whole lot from this. There's a bit of trial and error. Maybe next time I'll do some porting and uh, try some extreme port settings and see what happens.